Boston, that's another country, right? Yeah. It's always been that way. How many of y'all ever said that? <coughs> it's always been that way. At work or somewhere, you just it's always been that way. How many of y'all questioned about how something's being done and somebody says it's always been that way? Yeah. It's always been that way. It's real common. And that's the title of the message today. It's always been that way. Now, seven years ago, I gave this message, and I was going to do the same thing this morning. As you notice, I almost had all this gone. <laughs> I was going to be in my suit. How many of y'all have ever seen me in a suit? <laughs> You've seen the picture. Well, in 2007, I gave this message, and I was in a suit, and I had a tie on. I had my little white cowboy boots that I always use for funerals. And, <laughs> and uh, well, anyway, it don't fit no more. <laughs> <laughs> so that idea went out. So you see, I, did, I didn't finish shaving because I was going to be clean shaven. There's only a few of y'all that's even seen that. And I was going to have all this shaved off. <coughs> so anyway, what would have, had you seen me standing here in that suit that I can't wear anymore, what would have that have required? Well, it would have uh, required an open mind because yeah. I don't wear a suit. I wear this. I, I marry and bury in this. I, I sleep in this sometimes. My wife has to wake me up, take it off. It would require sacrifice of time. It takes time to shave, and it takes time to put a suit on versus just throwing a T-shirt on. Amen? And uh, the time and effort. And a sacrifice of how I feel about something. Sacrifice myself to dress a different way that I don't want to dress. And had you seen me, I'm going to lose some weight so I can give this message again in a few years. In my suit. It was funny to see everybody's face me wearing a tie. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. We're all family here. <laughs> That's why I've gained all the weight. I got a good one right here. Oh, girdle. I thought you said girl. All right. I'm going to tell you, yeah, we can have fun in the house of the Lord. That's amazing, isn't it right? You, he is our friend. And if he's not, he can be your friend today. He'll be your friend. He's not, he don't want to be distant. He wants to be close to you. He wants to feel those emotions that we have, the happiness that we have. I want to tell a story about it always being that way. And I've shared this with some of y'all. But it's a, it's a, it's going to hit close to home for you. But these folks decided to do a scientific experiment, and they built this big cage, and they put a ladder in the cage, and they put a big thing, a bundle of uh, uh, bananas at the top of this ladder, and then they stuck a gorilla in it. Now, what's the gorilla going to do? Going to go up the ladder of success to get this bundle of bananas. And what the scientists did is they had four people, one at each corner, with these high-volume water hoses that was squirting freezing rain, freezing water. They didn't like that. And it didn't take very long before the gorilla just quit trying because it didn't like to get wet. So then they said, well, let's stick another gorilla in there. And they stuck another gorilla in there. Now, it took half the amount of time to teach that gorilla not to go up the ladder of success. You want to know why? Because the first gorilla commenced to beating on that second gorilla. <laughs> Grabbed that gorilla and started beating on it. No, 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 no. Because it knew it was going to get wet too. And it did. And it didn't like it. So it took half the amount of time. So then they took a third gorilla. And they stuck that third gorilla in the cage. What did that third gorilla try to do? Go up the ladder of success. And it only took the third amount of time. Because two gorillas started beating up on that first gorilla. He didn't like it at all. That third gorilla. And when they put the fourth one in there, they learned something. It shocked them. But three gorillas overpowering one gorilla and beating him, they didn't have to squirt him. Isn't that pretty cool? And so then they took the very first gorilla out that learned by being squirted only, by just being doused with ice cold water. They took that first gorilla out, and they put one in, and the other three beat on him, and they did it again, and they did it again, and they did it so many times 
that any time that they ever put a new girl in, the other three would beat the other girl up. You know why, right? Because it's always been that way. Getting this? That's pretty powerful, ain't it? The gorillas that had been squirted with water are gone. And for some reason, these other three gorillas had learned to do something and didn't know why they were doing it. Mm, 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 mm. That's pretty powerful. Sometimes in our lives, we have change. And we need to change. Sometimes there's changes we don't like, but we find out later that we needed to change. If you've always done something a certain way, does it mean that you've been doing it the right way? No. Does God ever change your routine? Yes. Even back in the Old Testament times, if you'll turn your Bibles to chapter 22 in Genesis, if you'd like to follow along, I'm only going to read one verse. But the fact is that even in the old times, back to the first book in the Word of God in Genesis, I can't even imagine what was going on in Abraham's mind. You know the story in 22. In verse 2, God said this. Say amen when you're there. Verse 2 says, Now, take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell of thee of. Now that's change, folks. That's a huge change. God has been known to throw a change in our lives once in a while, but this, this is crazy. I can't even imagine having to give up a little man. I don't have that kind of love. I'm not that committed to God. I would walk away. Everybody's going, you're the preacher. Well, I'm just telling you the truth. I'm a transparent preacher. There's no way I could do that. I'd go put myself on the fifth floor of Scott and White and say something was talking to me, but it wasn't God. To sacrifice my son? Y'all getting this? We're going through Abraham's mind. The word doesn't say that he ever hesitated, but it only makes sense that at least he was thinking. For three days he's traveling to Moriah, to sacrifice his son. And that was the pagan way back then. The pagans sacrificed the living. What did we do? We sacrificed the lamb. Lamb. Because it's always been that way. It's always been that way. Sacrifice the lamb. But no, not now. God, God wants to sacrifice his son. Are you serious? But you know, Abraham was steadfast in his walk with the Lord because he did what he was told to do. Even though totally unexplainable change came into his life. Now don't miss this. I'm only on page two. Totally unexplainable change in his life. And what did he do? He did it. He went forth to do it. Why? Because his focus was on God and God only. His focus was on God and and God only. Folks, when there's changes in your life, if you will just focus on God and God only, come on. Are you getting this? There's changes in our lives daily. We focus on the person that's making the changes. We focus on the organization that's making the changes. But if we focus on God and God only, whoo, a lot of us are focusing on our own island gods. You know the, you know the. How many of y'all did the gods at war Bible study? Uh, amen. I mean, you see, when we, we we sacrifice our time and talents for things, we're playing. We're you can see people they ain't they're playing. And they, they're all sucked into something that's their god. You know, and it's taken away from our god, the true god. What does change entail? The open mind that I talked about. If Abraham had had a closed mind and if he had been set on the only way to do an offering is with a lamb, he wouldn't have adhered to God's way. And some of us are set in our ways. We're dogmatic about how something has to be done. And then when a change comes along, we sacrifice our relationship with Jesus because we don't have an open mind. In today's churches, there's so many closed minds. 
the, the carpet don't match the curtains, I'm not going back. Oh, come on. I, we we seen church splits over the, the color of the carpet. Some of y'all have. I know you have. No daycare, no youth ministry, no, you know, I'm just not going back. You're coming in looking to see what it can do for you and not what you can do for God. Not the church, God. What you can do for God. What can you do for Him? Amen? What else? Well, it requires a sacrifice. There's going to be a sacrifice. Isaac was going to lose his life. Abraham was going to lose his son. Change requires a sacrifice. In most cases, it's a sacrifice. Maybe giving up a current hobby of yours. Maybe giving up a current pastime that you like to do. Something you're really good at. And it's not easy to give it up for the Lord. But you know, I don't, I don't need to tell you you need to give up X, Y, and Z. God's already put it on your heart. You're probably sitting there going, man, I wish he'd shut up because God's talking to me right now. Amen? I don't know what it is. I don't have to know what it is unless you totally have to share that. It's up to you and God to get it figured out. But if there's something you're supposed to be giving up and you ain't doing it, Man, you can't get that intimate walk that you're, you're not changing because you won't sacrifice. You all have heard my story. You know, I used to fly over Gatesville, my toy. I had 111 landings till God took it from me. He made me sell it. But it was a sacrifice. But I enjoyed those 111 landings and thank God for allowing me to have some fun before, before it's gone. But now I could focus on the negative, right? And I could just walk away. Maybe the sacrifice is your current friends. Oh, Maybe it's who you're hanging around with when you're not at church. Maybe your current friends aren't of the church. Maybe they're not of the body of Christ anywhere. They don't have to be H2HBC. Maybe their walk is not even close to what God wants you to be around. Somebody need to hear that. Maybe leaving your current job. Maybe keeping your current job. <laughs> that could be a sacrifice. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the poor. Got a job. Well, keep it. Satan's going to come after you. <laughs> somebody need to hear that one <laughs> to many paying tithes is a sacrifice but that's supposed to be a blessing so if you're paying your tithes if you come up here and put money in here and it was a sacrifice then your, your heart ain't right anyway just keep it in your pocket in case you don't know I don't get paid so I meant that <laughs> amen I'm not a prosperity preacher but you got to do it out of the heart do what God calls you to do Time and effort. Change requires time and effort. We we took a stage out. And we're still suffering the repercussions. From the sound system to still not having slides. And some people's probably scratching their head going, Boy, the pastor, he's really ate up. We had everything going until he wanted twenty more chairs in here. Time and effort. Three days. To get to this mountain, servants traveled along carrying the wood and stuff and all, all this other grub. Time and effort for a change. And then sometimes we just need to change because we're doing things like the gorillas. There's no real reason to be doing what they were doing. Amen. Have you ever been... Have you ever Newton? Have you ever seen somebody doing something stupid, yeah. really stupid, and you try to help them out? Everybody's going, "Yeah, okay." Have you ever done something really stupid and somebody tried to help you out? Okay, we used to get some true ones. Okay, Amen. I love that. I love honesty and transparency, man. I don't think half y'all would have been going like that if you hadn't realized that I'm. A, I, mean, I have. I've been doing stuff stupid and I wouldn't listen later. My son, I went to my middle son went to Jonesboro. His his truck wouldn't start. Now give him a ride. Now how many y'all? kind of know a little bit about mechanical stuff you know you got these the starter relays got the two high amperage and the low you know little the little low 12 volt in the ground it closed the big relay well i'm a mechanic too okay now my middle son thad god bless him <laughs> we got there and he just got out to start his truck and I told him well soon as he tried well you started relay is not working right and before i could do anything he said i know dad i know and he took a pair of pliers should have been a screwdriver, right? For those of you who know what he should have been doing. 
And he took a pair of pliers and he went like this and went like this and he closed it over the two high amperage. Now he looked like a welder underneath the hood. And I was moving out of the way. And I said, son, he goes, and it didn't start. He goes, I got this, dad. And he did it again. <laughs> I had never seen nothing so stupid in my life. And that's my son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the truck started and he just smiled from ear to ear. See? And he thought he taught me something. I didn't have time to go, son. You know, we're going back to Leviathan. So I get in my truck, and he gets in his truck, and we get back. And I'm, I'm thinking the whole way, my God, he's going to kill himself someday. I've got to at least get him to listen. He wouldn't listen. <laughs> Why wouldn't he listen? Was it pride? It's always been that way. Somebody showed him, or he figured it out. But is it pride? Yeah. Was it ignorance? You know, what lack of being taught. So when we got to the, to the house, and we shut it off, I said, hey, Matt, I want to show you something. No, Matt. I said, Matt, I want, Dad didn't want to talk to me. He had too much pride. He done showed me something. So I said, Matt, I want to show you something. I want to show you how to start a truck when you need to. And Dad was sitting back like that, and I grabbed that screwdriver, and I slid it across the pole to the big pole, and I said, turn the key to run. You know, just turn it on. He turned it on, it started up, and I put it back. No arcing at all, you know. glory to God some of us are doing things that we think we're doing for the Lord and there's a there's a spiritual father or a spiritual brother that's or a spiritual sister or mother and saying hey there's a little bit easier way but some of us are going I got this <laughs> I hope y'all y'all got that and you're applying that to your lives amen glory Woo wee What is it about Christians that makes us resistant to change? Could it be the lack of desire? Oh, if you're taking notes, you need to write this one down. I got this bold and highlighted. Could it be the lack of desire to consciously and completely give everything you are and everything you have to our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm reading it again. Because what is it about us as Christians that makes us resistant to change? And could it be because we lack the desire to consciously and completely give everything we have and everything we are to Jesus Christ? Especially during the beginning of a change in our lives, we become fearful because that means we've got to sacrifice and we've got to give everything we are and everything we have to him just like Abraham did regardless of the change. Sometimes we serve God to a point and then when the calling changes we say, whoa, that's as far as I'm going, God. I got my feet wet. I'm good to go. You know what I'm saying? Some of us has gotten out in the water a little bit and we're playing the guitar with Chuck, and we're good to go. Well, I need you to sing today. Whoop, got that. Yep, that's a little bit too far. I ain't going to go out that deep in the water, you know. A lot of you all know what I'm talking about. You're there. I've been there for years. There's things I'm struggling with right now. It don't change. See, when you get to one level, God's got another one ready on you. So we're never at the level that we're supposed to be at. <laughs> You think you got a lot of levels in that Sega, whatever it is y'all play. Sega, that didn't say it right. You know, the crush thing. Anyway. Isn't it Candy Crush, Sega something on the phone? No? It, I don't play. You can tell I don't play it. I can't even say it right. But anyway. When the, requir when, when the command requires a sacrifice, we balk. And you know what I mean. Sometimes God requires a sacrifice of our time being somewhere earlier than we want to be getting up sooner than we want to or taking time off during you know going to church on on Sundays that's great maybe Wednesday nights but a Thursday night women's Bible study I don't know that's that's taking too much time we did that for a while we did that for a while remember that how about Sunday night Bible study we did that God summer bear one or two that's take oh, hey man we're you're dipping in too much of my time not me God is don't talk to me that's what God wants you to do 
Amen. But this is not new. Sometimes we have brothers and sisters leave the church because they don't want to do things that are going on. You have dissension among the congregation for someone else that's reading that you don't think should be reading or somebody else is making announcements you don't think should be making announcements or somebody's playing the guitars that shouldn't be playing the guitars. It goes on and on. But what I want to tell you this morning is that just means whoever you are, if that's how you feel and you look at things, the reason is not the focus on God. If you're focused on God, none of that would matter. Amen? We had a challenge this morning. That was a total change. Nobody knew that was going to happen, did they? Amen? Jesus and the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they give us a good example too. Jesus was the new gorilla and he was going up the ladder of success and the Sadducees and Pharisees didn't like it. Not only did they squirt water on him, but because they couldn't get him to stay down, they killed him. He changed everything, didn't he? He came in and it wasn't what they thought it was going to be and he changed everything. Sometimes change is good, isn't it? Are y'all getting this? God wants to change your lives. He wants to change our lives from our everyday sins to how we do business at work to how we do business in our churches. He wants people with clean hearts. He wants us to stand up and be responsible for the calling he has on our lives. And each and every one of you here have a calling. Mike and Sarah, you have a calling. Maybe you're already fulfilling it. I haven't got a chance to speak with you. But you have a calling that God wants to use you for that I can't do because we're different. He has a divine appointment set up for you, Michael, that I can't reach because there's somebody that you can touch that I don't have a clue how to help. Right, memory? There's somebody you're going to be able to help. Rick, somebody you're going to touch that I can't touch. Each and every one of you. Amen? Are you ready? Sometimes we have brothers and sisters in Christ that leave because of a hard teaching. Now, I've already got some armor bearers that's already promised me. That if I ever quit treat, teaching the unadulterated truth, that they will they'll get, make sure I leave. Amen? Amen. Good. Good. Because I'm going to continue to teach the truth, just like Jesus showed us. We don't teach a Happy Meal truth so that you feel better when you leave. Because you need to leave on fire for God and to let your light shine for Him and get other people to know Jesus Christ so the body can get bigger. Amen? John Chapter 6, verse 50 through 66 says, when you read this, it's where Jesus was talking about his flesh and talking about uh, the blood and talking about communion, the wine and the bread. And many left. Many left. Did they leave? It was a hard teaching, and they confused it with the pagan practices of the day. Now, isn't that ironic? I started off talking about Abraham, and he followed and did what God told him to do. But it, what the confusion was, was with the pagan practice of human sacrifices. And now here's Jesus teaching about communion, the blood and the flesh, the wine and the bread, a new covenant. And as long as you do this, do it and remember it's me. Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. And many left, many left. Well, did Jesus sit back and get all the disciples and say, okay, now we, we, we kind of really upset him, so let's figure out how we can redo. No, what did he do? Well, in verse 67 of chapter 6, he says, you don't want to leave too? Yes. You teach the truth, stand by the truth. The Bible says it, that settles it. Amen. Now, the Bible says that I believe it, that settles it. It's great to say, but whether I believe it or not, the Bible says that settles it. Amen? That's just the way it is. And we have a vision. Are you ready to grab a hold of that vision? Yes. Well, our church is growing. The vision's here. Hold on to the vision. If you, aren't, if you haven't become part of the family and you want to grab that vision, by all means, do it. And on the bulletin board, you can see the vision. I think it's the yellow one, isn't it, uh, Miranda? Yeah, it's the pastor's vision. Read that. You're not in agreement with it? Find one that has your vision, please. Don't just quit going, period. Find a church that has the vision you, you can agree with. But you've got to hold on to the vision. The last verse for today, last scripture, is John 17, 20 through 23. 
That's why I'm so dogmatic about us all being together. It's the Word of God. It's not Monty's opinion. John 17, 20 through 23 says, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which have believed on me through their word. Verse 21. That they all may be one. Say one. one. Put your hand up. One, one. They all be one. As thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us. He said it again. One. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gavest me, I, give, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. And verse 23, I and them and thou and me, that they may be made perfect in one. Good job. And that the world may know that thou hast sent me and hast loved me as thou hast loved me. Jesus is specifically and especially praying and letting you and me know that all believers need to be as one as one G cutting through the chase all in a nutshell focus on God as one and not all the other things that are going on and all the different changes and all that kind of stuff amen the more we dispute about lesser things the more doubt grows in about Christianity for the people that don't even know the Lord that's why we definitely need to get along and I pray each and every one of y'all uh, have been touched by this message. You've extracted just a small portion of it for your personal lives. And that you will receive that change today and glorify God with it. Amen. With that, there's lots of changes coming. There always is. We're not quite five years old yet. And there's been lots and lots of changes. And they're going to keep coming. Some, some of those changes may not be changes we like. But when the changes come, focus on God. Let's pray. Father God, I, I just thank you for another powerful message that you've given us. Lord, I thank you for the changes that are coming, changes that we may not like. Lord, I pray that each and every one of us have extracted that little, just that small portion of this message that we needed personally in each and every one of our lives that we can apply from this day forward and be changed for your glory. And again, Lord, as these, uh, as these changes come along, that sometimes we consider storms, let us back up. And focus on you. And thank you for the change. And just let us see what you plan on doing in our lives. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.